Today we're at Dream Machines of Texas to install a Pathfinder LED dynamic sequential spoiler light onto this 2002 Honda Goldwing. The Pathfinder LED sequential spoiler light replaces your stock spoiler LED. Not only is it brighter than the stock LED, but it has a built-in running light function. The integrated deceleration flashing brake light means you don't have to purchase an additional brake modulator. And it even has sequential turn signals built in. This unit will increase your visibility and, best of all, it's plug and play installation. Your LED spoiler light kit comes with everything you need for installation. The wires are color coded to match the included plug and play wiring harness. The only tools required for installation are a 5mm Allen socket, a 6mm Allen socket, a ratchet handle and a socket extender, a Phillips screwdriver, and an 18 inch piece of stiff wire. 16 gauge wire should work fine. We need to remove the four 6mm Allen bolts that hold the seat onto the Goldwing. These are located on the passenger grab handle. And you can remove these using a socket and a ratchet. Now this particular Goldwing has an aftermarket backrest uh, mounting bracket that I have to remove, uh, but it is the same procedure for removing your seat. Once these four bolts are removed, you can then remove the handles, and I usually just leave the bolts in, and then set those off to the side. To remove the seat, you need to start at the rear, and it's sort of flexible. The base of the seat is flexible, so it will bend, and you can pull it forward and up enough to clear that backrest. If your Goldwing has a heated seat, you'll need to unplug the heater before you continue to fully remove the seat. If your Goldwing does not have a heated seat, you can skip this step. With the seat in this position, you can now reach in and slide that little protective cover up and you'll be able to access the connector and disconnect that connector as shown. With that disconnected, you can now just carefully lift up and back and the seat will come off and just set it off to the side for now. To access the turn signal connectors, we need to remove the rear fender. The fender is held in place with four 5mm hex bolts shown here. You can remove these using a socket. With all the bolts removed, you can now pull firmly on the bottom of that fender and it should snap or unsnap out of place. There's some little clips that hold it in as well. And here you can see there's some wires connected to this one because he's got aftermarket lights installed. And you can also see what looks like a rat's nest of connectors and wires. These are all the aftermarket electronics. But what we're looking for is simply a three-wire a red connector, and there's the red one. You can see, found it there. And there's a blue one, uh, the same exact type three wire connector for blue. Those are the two turn signal connectors that we're gonna tie into. Now on a typical Goldwing without all this stuff installed, you should be able to find the red and blue connectors right in this area right here. Shouldn't be hard to find at all. Now I'm using one of these expandable magnets and I'm, I fished it down through near the trunk at the back underneath the seat and here you can see it coming out uh, kind of near the rear tire and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that to fish these wires up through uh, that area and get it to come out underneath the seat. Here I'm unplugging that red connector and I'm going to take our SoCal wiring harness and I'm going to just patch in uh, from where I disconnected that red connector, I'm going to patch it right in line. And I'm going to do the same thing with the blue connector. I'm just going to unplug the factory connector. And I'm going to plug my SoCal Moto Gear harness in place. And then I'm going to tape the other end 
of this wiring harness to that magnet and pull it up uh, so I get it to the back of the seat. Here you can see I'm pulling the magnet out. Uh, you'll see in a second that I taped the other end. Now, of course, you could use a coat hanger or a stiff piece of wire to fish these wires up as well. If your Goldwing already has a spoiler installed, it must be removed before we can install the new light. There are 15 self-tapping screws that hold the trunk lid liner in place. All of these must be removed and make sure to keep these separated uh, so that you put the correct screws back in during reassembly. Remove the two trunk strikers by removing the four screws that hold them in place and set these off to the side. It's very important that you keep these screws separate from your 15 trunk lid liner screws. These are longer and they could damage your trunk if you use them in the wrong place. With the screws removed, you can now pull the liner away from the trunk lid and you'll be able to access the connector uh, that's connected to the remote control receiver. And you just basically press down on this little plastic tab that's on the electrical connector under the trunk. You can see it here. Press that down and pull that connector out. Next, we need to disconnect the existing spoiler brake light uh, from underneath the trunk lid. That's a white plug. You just disconnect it. The spoiler is held in place by four bolts, as you can see here, and you use a five millimeter socket to get those out. Now, don't remove the four screws that hold in the luggage rack if you have a luggage rack installed on your bike. Here I'm using a five millimeter socket to loosen these four bolts. I'm not going to remove them yet, but I am going to remove the two on the bottom and I'm going to leave the two on top in place until I'm ready to remove the spoiler. I'm kind of protecting the spoiler uh, with my jacket here just between that and the luggage rack. And now I'm going to hold on to the spoiler as I remove those top two bolts. You don't want to let go of the spoiler because it could slide off or fall off. And then put the trunk lid back down once you've got all the bolts removed. I'm going to take my jacket out and you may have to kind of bang up on the spoiler a little. It can stick. It has a little rubber gasket that could stick in place. And then carefully remove the spoiler and the wires will come out through a hole on the left side as you can see here. Once I have the spoiler off, I like to clean up the area. I'm using one of these little wet ones because it has some alcohol in it. I just want to clean off that residue from that rubber gasket uh, that the spoiler left on. You don't have to do this. I just think it makes for a better installation. Now in your kit, you'll find a brake light connector harness like this, and that plugs in underneath the trunk lid uh, where we disconnected the previous one. Just go ahead and hook that up. And now we're ready to remove the spoiler light uh, from the spoiler. Now you'll notice I'm working on some carpet here because you don't want to scratch uh, the top of your spoiler. So it's just a couple of Phillips screws that hold this light in place. And once those screws have been removed, uh, you can pull that spoiler light out from the spoiler itself. And you'll see some wires connected to it, obviously. Now we don't want to pull this wire harness completely out because we're going to use the old wires as a way to fish our new wires from our new spoiler light uh, through that opening in the spoiler. As you can see here, I'm taping this uh, to the old wires and then I just pull on the old harness and it will pull the new wires uh, through the spoiler and out the opening in the base as shown. And once you do that, uh, then you're ready to install your new SoCal Moto Gear spoiler light using the two screws that we used to remove the old one. Now we're ready to reinstall the spoiler. Simply fish the wires through the hole in the center on the left side and then position the spoiler in place. And you want to make sure to hold on to the spoiler the whole time you do this because you don't want it to slide off and just hold on to it as you carefully lift up the lid of the trunk 
and then line up the holes, the screw holes uh, on the spoiler with the holes underneath the trunk lid. And then go ahead and put in those two top screws. Now, of course, once you have the two top screws in place, you can then uh, let go of the spoiler. You no longer have to hold on to it. You just want to make sure you have those two screws in before you let go so it doesn't accidentally slide off and get damaged. Of course, once you have the two top screws in place, you can now put all the other screws in and tighten them up using a socket. Now, you want to be very careful that you don't over tighten these bolts. Just get them firmly tight, but they don't need to be too tight. You don't want to risk cracking that plastic. Here I'm loosening the screw that holds the backrest pad in place just enough. I don't need to remove it just enough so I can fish those wires that came up from underneath the seat. This is our wires that we fished up from the rear fender. And I'm just going to kind of fish it up through this little opening in the trunk lid, as you can see here. And then uh, I'll retighten that backrest pad and we'll be able to uh, connect up our new spoiler light. Connecting the spoiler is pretty simple. All the wires are color coded. So you simply just plug them in red to red, yellow to yellow, black to black, blue to blue, and white to white. And once you do that, you're pretty much finished with the electrical portion of the installation. Now, before we put everything back together, this is a good time to test the light. Turn your bike on, uh, hit the brakes, make sure the, the brake light uh, deceleration flasher is working, make sure the sequential turn signals are working. It's always a good idea to test it before you put everything back together. Reinstall the trunk lid liner as shown. Don't forget to reconnect your remote control unit, the large gray plug as we disconnected earlier. And as you uh, install this trunk lid liner, make sure all the wires are tucked up out of the way. And earlier I used an electric screwdriver to remove all these screws. I advise against that when reinstalling. You should just use a hand screwdriver because you don't want to over tighten any of these screws. Then install the two trunk lid strikers using the four longer screws that hold those in place. I always like to pull on the striker a little bit as I'm tightening it because I think it helps the trunk uh, close better. Now we're ready to reinstall the rear fender. I'm trying to make sure all these wires are tucked up out of the way. You kind of line up the holes on top, start at the top, and you may actually have to kind of pound the sides with your hand because those little clips have to snap into place and then simply replace those four five millimeter allen bolts and tighten them. When reinstalling the seat, make sure the nylon tab at the front of the seat slips underneath this frame rail bar on the bike. With the seat in place, you can now reinstall the two passenger grab handles using the four 6mm Allen bolts. Again, this motorcycle has an aftermarket backrest mounting bracket, so you could ignore that. You'll just reinstall the bolts and the grab handles. <music> 